you know, the shooting percentages, you know, weren't great. But here in the first quarter of this game, the Post Eagles have really come out flying and knocking down shots both from the perimeter as well as taking it to the basket. Good start for Coach Plefka's squad. All right, Sear Foster inbound for the Tigers, trailing at 16-9 early on. Morrow. Moore. Moore one-on-one -on -one with McQueen. Moore, a little baseline jumper, won't go. Gets the offensive rebound in traffic and lays it back a bit. No good. Scramble again, and a held ball is going to go back to the Eagles. Actually, I think they're going to call a foul, I think, on... Searfoss? On Searfoss, yeah. Okay, Searfoss in or, traffic. It looked like it was going to be a tie-up, but the call is the foul on... on no, it's going to be on... Yeah, Searfoss. Or first, things are a little confused on the board. We're working on it. Here's Eubank, stops, pops off glass, won't get the roll. Morrow the rebound. Here's Searfoss. And the layup is good by Morrow. She has six of the 11 Tigers points. Yeah, Ava Morrow's doing a really good job finding the sweet spot at the free throw line. She's knocked down jumpers from there and was able to go off the bounce against Pagan to get the layup. She had one of her best games of the year points-wise against Holy Family the first time she had 11, or against Post the first time she had 11. She most clears the rebound here. Moore with it now. Bob down to Prevost, open for the layup and lays it in. Good ball movement by Holy Family. Able to swing the basketball and then get a post entry for an easy bucket. McQueen, run all the way across the corner to White now. Haynes, they have to respect that. Come out for her. Haynes drives, Haynes off glass, no good. Rebound collected by Searfoss. Searfoss all the way now. Baseline jumper, quick trigger, no good by Morrow, and a foul's gonna stay there. As good activity that time by Mo Moore. Well, and, you know, White kind of got caught, you know, getting getting caught somewhat underneath the basket and needed to push more to establish that position away from the basket to get the rebound. All right. Tiger ball. Discussion now at the table. Cleared up, whatever it might have been. And we tried that little play, but it's not a backcourt. Gonna get up will be no more. Tenth in the conference and assist, almost three per game. Senior from right here in Philadelphia, Archbishop Bryan. Searfoss, scoop, no good. Rebound is scrambled for and pulled out of there by Morrow. Long three by Treader, too strong. And trying to save it as Searfoss she can't with the post bench. Really good extra effort by the Holy Family players. The, um, the ability to get second chance opportunities really has enabled them to, to score here in this first quarter. Here's Allen. Pagan. Back to Haynes. Haynes. Not good, Haynes. Not good. Flip with the left hand won't go. Offensive rebound, though, by Pagan. Tipped away from the bench, but she is fouled. She will go to the free throw line. Well, and a tough and ball there the against Holy Family. <laughs> Got to do a better job on the offensive glass. You now, Post really sends a lot of players to the O boards to extend offensive possessions. The Tigers really need to do a good job of blocking out and secure rebounds. Well, here you go, boy. Here you go, Black. Here you go, Tiger. Here you go. Ten seconds to play. In the here you go, Tiger. Allen. Here go. Nowhere to go. Come on. The pushing foul is going to bail her out. Well, a, a tough call again to go against Holy Family as 
But it looked like Marilyn Prevost, well, now, you know what? It is a good call as Ava Morrow clearly gave her a, a nice love tap bump to, to get her off her feet. Two on Morrow, but it will put the junior from New Haven at the free throw line. I guess they gave her credit for that being shooting. She was kind of driving to the basket. I don't know if she was shooting. Yeah, there was no, there, yeah. It, 13 foul. Yeah, I don't I don't think the shot was uh, getting getting uh, close to the basket when the contact was made. Which Puff go take it here. One second, zero. Half court. He is off to the right. And at the end of the first half, the Eagles hold an 18 to 13 lead. And we are going to go down to our friend quarter. Andrew Byrne on the floor. Andrew. Thanks, guys. Well, remember, when these two teams met in the regular season, Post was held at just 34 points. It's the least amount of points they had scored since 2018. Well, already a quarter in the books. They have 18 points. They had just four in that first meeting. The difference, points in the paint. We continue to see the Eagles scoring at will inside. I did hear Coach Plefka, though, talking about his team. They got to get back when Holy Family is in transition because if the Tigers can get out of the floor, space the floor, they can score the basketball when they get in transition. Back to you guys upstairs. Thanks, Andrew. Good point there. And we talked about how in that first game, I think, can't completely discount it because they did have Haynes and they did have Pagamitas early in the time that they were back, and it's a very different team. Post usually the team that's limiting teams to under 40 points, but in that game, they were the one that would help to that number. Yeah, and it, you know, if you you don't shoot the ball well and you don't get things going to the basket you know you you can you can see those problems uh, occurring but they they've really gotten out of the blocks well here in the first quarter and, and, and a lot of it is is they've, they've gotten balance it's not just the Sharia Haynes show you know uh, Tyree Allen and, and Kiara Eubanks have really come out of the gate firing as well it's a good start for coach Buck to start. 18-13 is the Eagles' lead. They're the number one North seed wearing the white uniforms here. You missed it earlier. First of all, shame on you, but if you missed it earlier, Dominican coming up with a 72-71 victory over the host Jefferson Rams. So the winner of this game will play tomorrow at noon for the CAC Championship. Here's Haynes driving off glass, no good. Rebound pulled down by Moore. Pass ahead, layup by Hinkle, no good coming in off the bench. More travel. Taylor Hinkle, the freshman from Chalfont, Pennsylvania, gets it, her first touch. It was a really nice look by Mo Moore to find Hinkle ahead of the floor for the opportunity for the layup and a, and a, and a nice, nice play defensively by Post to reject the shot. Not allow a bucket for Holy Family to start the second quarter. 42, Jessica Reby in for the Tigers. And 15, Tijanae Simmons. Junior out of Houston, Texas. Many Houston, Texas players in the CACC, Coach. Is anybody from North Rockland in this game? No. No, huh? No. Layup is short. <laughs> Little floater. There will be one tomorrow, though, Coach. There will be two tomorrow. And a UMBC track. Yeah. Foul is going to be ticketed to Hinkle, her first, first of the second quarter. We're going to put Eubanks, 70% free throw shooter at the line. She's from Akakeek, Maryland. Transferred from Wilmington, so stayed within the conference when she transferred. Akakeek is in southern Maryland, right below D.C. Right on the banks of the Potomac River. George Washington might have tossed a coin across. Right by Akakeek. Foss now leaves it for Reby. Searfoss again. Treader in rhythm three. Yes. yes. Lindsay Treader gets the on the board with a three. It's 1960. Good ball movement by Holy Family, finding the open player and Treader knocking down the three ball. Sixth in the conference in threes is Treader with now her 52nd of the season. Reby jumper. Side of the win, no good. Rebound to Pagan. Pagan did a nice job of establishing position on the weak side, corralling that rebound. Eubank are the clean two star. They get it back. 
McQueen will try and get no! it to go. The grand student from Roosevelt Catholic buries the three in 2216. Tiara McQueen getting that friendly shooter's roll. Nice, easy front rim for the bucket. Good shooter, good shooter, Stacey. Missing one shot or getting an air ball. Right in rhythm. No, she's confident she's going to make that shot. Tracking it down is painful. Come on, Tiger! There's a game, lady! To McQueen. Swung across to Eubanks. Eubanks for three. Yeah! Play by Kiara Eubanks faking the pass on that reversal, fake the pass to the corner to allow for space for that jump shot. And the Eagles back to back trays have extended their lead to nine here early in the second quarter. Post led the conference with 222 three pointers through Tuesday, and Holy Family fifth with 171, but they have shown. The prowess from beyond the arc, that's a John Plefka thing. He loves to have his gals shoot the three, high volume. Sometimes you, you get an offensive rebound, put it back in. If you take you know, 10 possessions and you shoot eight threes out of them, you know, the good things are going to happen, especially well, with a prolific team like this. And, and let's face it, you know, to try to get that extra point, you ju it's mathematics. You know, you shoot a lot of threes, you make some, you know, that's, that's going to result you know, highly in your favor. But... I think, you know, the phrase that you use, the high intensity, you know, you, you watch this post team, they play that way. They play with a very aggressive kind of style. The, the energy level is high and it's infectious. And when good things tend to happen, they happen in bunches for post. And again, they're such a hot team right now. They're extremely confident and they've gotten out of the gate strong here in this game. And here we are, you know, 7.42 remaining in the second quarter, nine-point lead. The CACC North Championship came down to Dominican versus Post in a game last week. Post came up with the win, got that number one seed, and gets to be the home team here. Searfoss tries to dump it down inside, but it's knocked away by a host of Eagles, a host of Post. Here's Haynes, Eubanks, extra pass in the corner to Allen. McQueen for three, in and out. Rebound repeat. Man, it almost went down. Would have been the third consecutive three for the Eagles. Three votes for now Searfoss across to Tratter. Here's Reapy down to 10. Hinkle to off the back iron, no good. Well, Taylor Hinkle really was able to get by her player. Just has to finish in that situation. Haynes, no good. Rebound, Searfoss, and she's fouled coming out of there. Good rebound in traffic by the freshman. You know, it's not a bad foul by Tyree Allen. As you see, Sherea Haynes is missed. Skylar Cephas was able to get the rebound, and if there was no contact there, you know, Holy Family had some numbers. They might have gotten an easy fast break bas basket. Substitution, we've got White back in for the Eagles. Sear boss. Layup is good by Sear boss and a turnover as I look down to mark the score and coach I didn't Yeah, yeah they, they violated they after the bucket they they just the inbounder just stepped over the end line uh, when she made the pass. She wasn't completely out of bounds. Uh, play the inbound three by Treader won't go. Offensive rebound not good by Hinkle. And now a scramble and Haynes is gonna come out of there with it. Keeps the dribble though. So smart to keep that dribble going when she went down to one knee. Kind of Marcus Haynes. The old globe trotter. Haynes, Shreya Haynes. Here's a little lay for Pagan. Uh, Kiara Eubanks, great dribble drive and dish to Pagan for the easy bucket. Here's Searfoss. Foss. 
power move won't go for Prevost. Yep. Get it, bro. Back to the Eagles. What? I'm really impressed with Post's interior defense today. Anytime that Holy Family gets an opportunity near the basket, they're very closely guarded. They're not getting any easy shots in and around the basket. They're very well guarded and contested, and they haven't made a high number of them. Yeah, it starts with Pagan and her presence inside. Not gaudy numbers in terms of scoring, but a defensive stalwart. This one is taken by Sirfoss. Slings it ahead to Henkel, who lays it in. That's a great finish by Taylor Henkel, catching it in stride on the move, able to finish the layup, really athletic play. One freshman to another, and it's a 27-20 game. Eubanks gets a screen. Haynes. Haynes, another long three. This one's a little off to the right, but White collects the rebound. They get a fresh 20. I don't think Coach Plefka wants Sherea Haynes just pounding the ball and then, and then shooting a distance three. The offense is better when they're getting things going to the basket like they just did there with Kiara Eubanks. Eubanks, Eubanks is able to set Taylor Henkel up and able to get the contact. Eubanks will get to the line here. since there was a timeout taken that will negate what would be immediate timeout here. And we'll put the grad student at the line, makes the first free throw, then transfer from Wilmington where she averaged 9.9 .9 points a game over three years and 61 games there in a fellow CACC conference member. And makes it 29-20 in favor of the Eagles. Treader to Moore. Mo Moore stepping back. Stolen away by McQueen. What a good anticipation by Tiara. She drives all the way in. Off glass won't go. Offensive rebound won't finish. And Searfoss comes away with it. Three on two. Searfoss. Jumper. Won't go. Offensive rebound. Put back is good. Well, really impressive though by Cephas. To two feet jump stop, shot didn't go down, but really impressive move by the freshman. Answer to the Kokolis layup won't go in. Jen Kokolis, the junior from Bethlehem, getting that follow-up basket just a moment ago. Straight up three for Treader. Yes. Yeah. Now with Treader, two threes today. It all starts with a triple drive and a good kick out for a wide open three. 29-25, down to a four-point game. Coach, as you've been in a while, Coach. Yeah, it all starts with some really good defense by Holy Family in the last few trips. Here's Haynes, step on three. Haynes, and hits that guy wire again on the rebound. When Post has to play in the half court, and they just settle for deep threes, they're not as nearly as affected when they're getting things going to the basket. Angela Hayes, grad student out of Sitka, New Jersey, a four-time CACC All-Academic Team member. Number three checks in for the Tigers. A timeout on the floor of the 32nd variety. Don't forget, second half of our quadruple header coming up today. About five o'clock, we'll be starting the men's semifinals. And that will be two games starting at five o'clock and seven o'clock. And then tomorrow, the winner of this game at noon will take on Dominican. If you're just tuning in to a surprise, surprise Dominican with the overtime exciting win over the host Jefferson here. So the two teams will be going at it today. We'll have the right to play Bill Diener's Chargers tomorrow at noon. Here's Hayes, number three, just flipping it over to Searfoss. Keeps the pivot foot. Searfoss again. That's a nice feed down to Prevo. She did a good job of here. Good call, partner. I mean, she sealed her player up into the lane, was able to get a nice lob pass for a wide open layup. Two point game at 29, 27 for the Eagles. Seven point run here for the Tigers. 
Matt, the women to the 12, men to the 230, and we have both games. Eubanks tries to force her way in there, and the hell ball is going to go back to the Tigers. Just everything in the last few minutes is fueled for Holy Family by their defense. You see Mo Moore really doing a nice job defensively, getting that held ball on the block shot, and a resulting possession for Holy Family, and they can either tie or take the lead. Yeah, I like no call there, too, on that. Just two good players going at it. Here's Moore. Step back, elbow jumper, gets it to go over time. First point of the game for Balmore. And they fight all the way back to this Holy Family to even this score at 29. Just really good basketball the last few minutes by the Tigers. Haynes tries to feed Pagan. It's taken away from her. And then Pagan definitely wanted to commit the foul there, no question. Might Almost be an intentional it. foul, and it will be. It's going to be an intentional foul call against Pagan. And Pagan trying to stop the fast break there by committing the foul. I think she thought maybe she committed it already. And then when she didn't get called, she kind of grabbed the hole of some shorts. And yeah. The next thing you knew, it was an intentional foul. So well, this will be two shots on the ball. Well, the one, the one official made the call, and now they're talking about it. Let's see if they rethink. They may, made, they may have made the initial call of a foul before that. Oh, great! Teams. Oh, they're going to go to the monitor. I mean, they're going to see maybe if there's some kind of a flag. I don't think there was any flagrant involved. I'm I, not sure I, what they're looking at here. Yeah, they're going to look at whether or not this is an intentional foul. There was, there was a very, I'll call it, uh, meekly made call by one of the officials in his indication of, a, of an intentional foul. And, uh, and they're looking at it now. And our, our man, Andrew Byrne, is right behind the scorer's table. And I don't know, Andrew, I don't know if you can hear me. Um, they're looking to see if it was an intentional foul on Pagan, correct? That is correct, guys. They are checking to see if it is an intentional foul as ruled initially on the floor. All right, thank you, Andrew. Andrew's so nosy down there. He's got his nose <laughs> to everything. What kind of sideline reporter are you? 29-29 <laughs> is the score. And, it, and, it, and he just gave us the signal. It's going to be an intentional foul on Pagan. Coach Plefka not loving it, but yeah. I guess understanding it, not giving too much back on that. And it will be just possession here. Well, it should be two shots and then possession back because of the intentional foul. And it will put Searfoss at the line, the 85% free throw shooter nearly coming in. It's the first. She has six points. 10 points, 11 rebounds the first time these two teams played. Holy and that gives Holy Family the lead for Holy, the first time. Holy Family on a, on a 10 or 11-0 run here. It's been a while since Post has scored a basket or scored a point even. And they get another chance here with the possession. Treader in the corner. Gets it down to Prevost. Prevost makes a move, left hand. Nice move by Carolyn Prevost, right on Pagan. Really, really nice move by Carolyn Prevost. Set it up well, was patient with her move. Good, strong move to the basket for the bucket. Haynes. Leaves it for McQueen. Here's Tiara. Queen has some trouble, gets it back out to White. Jumper from the free throw line is good by Jayla White. And a big basket for Post to stop the run, I believe, at 12-0. Good job by White to knock down that foul line jump shot. 13-point run we hear from our helpers. Prevost again, this time it won't finish, and White scoots in and gets it. Now, uh, Sharia Haynes came over and gave help on Prevost. Did a nice job forcing a tough shot. Here's McQueen. Could be a two for one here for the Eagles. White. That's a screen. White drives. Blocked away. Pagan, the follow won't go. 
Eubanks fighting for it, and it was actually McQueen fighting for it, but the offensive rebound, another chance here from the free throw line. And there you see the athleticism and the tenaciousness of the Post Eagles as Pagan misses the first attempt, but then there's two offensive rebounds by the Eagles, and it's gonna result in White getting fouled, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. All right, so Jayla White, the 78% free throw shooter, makes the first. 75% free throw shooter, eight of 12 on the season. One more coming for the senior from Plainfield. Gets it to go. And the tie to get it 33. Holy Family could have rushed it up and, and here tried to go for a little two for one. That's not gonna happen now. Hayes, now in the corner for Treader. Back out to Hayes for three, no good. Took by Moore, but that's gonna be the third foul on Mo Moore. On Mo Moore. Yeah, Mo really trying to, to get that offensive rebound. And she just climbs the back of Tiara McQueen. Great block. And I was just gonna say that, you have to reward that player for boxing out there. Shot clock off. Haynes. May not give it up, Coach. May not. She does. Three-pointer by McQueen, no good. Rebound cleared, two seconds, one. We are going to go in right where we started, Coach. 0-0, and now it's 33-33. A spirited first half by both teams. As we will grab Coach Plefka before he gets away. Andrew Burns not letting him get away. <laughs> Here is Andrew Byrne with post coach John Plefka. Coach, last meeting with Holy Family, you guys were held to 34 points. You already have 33 at the half. What's changed for you offensively in this meeting? Yeah, a little bit different. I think a change of scenery is really important for us. Anytime you play any team in our conference, even though they played here this year, we haven't. It gives us a little bit of, a, of an even playing field. So they're a phenomenal team, and hopefully we can figure out a way to pull this off in the second half. Is the pace right now where you want it to be, that fast style for the Eagles? Yeah, we're good. I think we're really good. We're just happy that we're not on that side of the floor now. Um, so that's a good thing. That's a good sign of motivation that not many people know. But hopefully here we'll ride it up and uh, come out with a victory. What did Holy Family do during that 13 nothing run to get back in the game? Uh, they just It's transition and conversion, you know. If we make this a half-court game, they're not going to beat us. So I think that's something that's really important. But that's effort, you know. Win, lose, or draw at the end of the day, if they beat us by effort, you know, that's something that we don't want to have. So we'll we'll make an adjustment here at time and see what happens. Thanks for the time, fellas. Back to you guys upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Andrew, uh, with Coach Plefka there, Tim Jimenez, Mike Andrews. And uh, that was a quite the back and forth there, kind of a tale of two quarters. Yes, it was. Uh, the big run by Holy Family. You know, they did a 13-0 run, and then Post kind of got four points in there at the end to kind of bring it back a little bit. Some interesting comments by Coach Plefka. What was the inside knowledge about, I'm here all the time, I have no idea what the inside knowledge is. I love the fact that he, he's, he's big into the neutral court. <laughs> um, I, I believe that to be true. Yeah. You know, because the Holy Family crowd, I mean, they're probably a lot here anyway because it's in Philadelphia, but it's a little even playing field. He loves the pace. I like the pace of the game too for them. Uh, Haynes, Allen, Eubanks, McQueen all have three point baskets. As uh, I think Jerry said in the in the during the game, 222 three-point baskets for Post this year. So they are comfortable shooting it behind the arc. They certainly are. Uh, Post tonight uh, from beyond the arc, uh, they shot uh, four of 17. Or, oh, that was the four second of 12. Four of 12. Excuse four of 12, me. Yeah, yeah, four of 12 uh, from beyond the arc. That's the 33 percent, 35 percent on the night from the field for Post. Seven of eight from the free throw line, and uh, for this Holy Family team, that. That second quarter, they really, they really charged there. They could have, you oh. know, they, they could let this love slip away early, but they really battled in that second quarter. They did. Trebos with a big basket. Moore, unfortunately, she goes to the bench. You hate to see the stars go to the bench, but you know you gotta, <laughs> you gotta play a little bit more controlled. Trebos picked up that, in, uh, no, uh, Pagan picked up the intentional foul. Shirfas drained both baskets. You know, so they were, they, 
they took their they got their shot, they took it, they kind of reeled him in. They got it to a very manageable game now. It's the second half run. Let's see who's going to make more shots. That's the thing, right? Who makes the most shots? Uh, for Holy Family, they shot overall 41% from the field, two of eight from beyond the arc, and three of four, three of four, excuse me, from the free throw line. And uh, uh, just kind of the individual numbers, if we look at for Holy Family, of course, the player we've been uh, talking about a lot uh, in terms of uh, the success she's had for this Holy Family team, and Skylar Searfoss, the CACC Rookie of the Year. Uh, for her, seven points, and she really came up big in that second quarter like we talked about. And it doesn't surprise me that she was on the court the entire time with Lindsey Treader. You know, 20 minutes, you lean you lean on your stars in these kinds of games. You, you go play. You know, Prevost, again, 20 minutes, played all all the time. <laughs> but yeah, you, you go. You don't come off the court. Exactly, exactly. And Soraya Haynes uh, on the other end, another player we always talk about for the post, uh, seven points tonight. Uh, a lot of volume in terms of uh, her shots, but uh, I guess it's a bit of struggle if you look at the overall numbers, the 3 of 11 from the field. But the fact that she's, she, you know, for whatever reason, she didn't play November, December, you got to think that her legs are fresh in January, February, and then it, now we're into March. Plus, it's a big stage. You know, the good players in this league, they like the big stage. They want to come out and they want to prove to everybody that, yes, I was a first-team selection and I was that for a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, rightfully so. And, and I think Going to one of the comments, I think Jr. made, you know, or maybe Jerry made this, but uh, you know, seeing that Jefferson lost, oh, this is anybody's tournament. This is absolutely anybody's tournament. I mean, you know, you could say it always has been because you never know what happens in conference play. Mm -hmm. But now the top seed in the entire conference is out. If you're Holy Family, you propose, of course, Dominican's waiting, but you have a wide open opportunity here. Big chances because you know that you've taken some punches early in this game. You know, if you're post, you took the big punch, you know, that 13-0 run, your holy family, you only put up 13 points in the first quarter, and post put up 18, so you kind of you kind of took your punch there. Now it's time to see what both coaches can do to adapt, to see if we want to keep this pace going. Post scores 66 a game, and holy family scores 67 a game on average. Both teams, as we got into February, Post was scoring 70 a game, and Holy Family only scoring 65 a game. But both are playing their best basketball now. Uh, post 6 and 1 in the month of February, and Holy Family 5 and 2. So you want that coming into your conference playoffs. You want to. You don't want to be coming in limping with people hurt. You want to be coming in hitting on all cylinders. And I think we've seen it out of both teams. We have, and just like earlier, and again, just to kind of recap, uh, the winner of this game uh, between Holy Family and Post will take on. The Dominican Chargers, who uh, have came away with a, a victory again, we're still kind of getting over that last second shot there—a <laughs> terrific shot uh, to end that one. Uh, the Dominican team just played so hard, and the Jefferson team just the offense just wasn't there, just was not enough offense. So you see a lot of those red and black sweatsuits on the left side of the gym. They came in afterwards, and they're everybody's chin is up, big smiles. They're rightfully so, absolutely. Everybody got their post game, whatever they got, treatment or a little bit of food. Now they're out here just kicking their feet up and watching these two teams go at it. Yeah, exactly. There's some terrific basketball. We're seeing some of the highlights now on the screen here. Uh, that big three-point shot, good. Look at that. And, and, and talking to the uh, the Holy Family crowd. Yeah. I, yeah, I heard Jerry, Jerry mention that. Jerry mentioned that. I talk about that. What a big shot there. That's hey. Another three coming in. Post is, is it's kind of like you know. No, does anybody go up there to Connecticut? You know, we all make trips up there sure. to go play, but. They're probably thinking like they're the Seattle Seahawks. You know? yeah, right. Nobody watches West Coast football. Right, that's a good point. Or, or West Coast basketball because we're all sleeping by the time it comes right. on. But, oh, no, we play this game too, and we play it at a high level. Yeah, they certainly do. As we're seeing some of the Holy Family highlights now, there's a three-point shot uh, up and good there. The only three-point basket, Treader. Treader's got two. Treader's got, he's got a pair. Treader, she can certainly hit those threes that we haven't seen anywhere. Let's look at the uh, there the you wonder if that's going to play out in the second half, if that's going to start to become a little bit of an issue. We heard JR say, you know, you just do the simple math. Right. You guys are making threes, and I'm only making twos. There's going to be a challenge there to try to close that gap. But, all right, what do we see in the start of the second half? Or do we want to want to wait to hear what okay, oh yeah, what uh, Coach Bernard Lakaitis is going to say coming out? Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Uh, you know, I think, like you said, your stars are going to uh, show – uh, what they're made of here today. Sear Foss, I think we'll just see a little bit more in the second half <coughs> from her. Uh, again, seven points of the, the CACC Rookie of the Year. 
Uh, and, and again, Prevost has been really good as well. So I think uh, this is a balanced team. I don't know. I think it's anybody's game at this very moment. I don't know what kind of changes. Both teams are taking good care yes. of the basketball. A combined yes. nine turnovers here. So that total. has total yeah. nine turnovers for both teams. So that hasn't been an issue here tonight. No uh, real no real foul trouble except more. No foul trouble. So maybe like, which team will maybe make some of the more defensive plays uh, with the stops and forcing the issue, getting some fast break points, mm -hmm. uh, maybe getting some easy baskets to, to get some momentum. Uh, we'll see, but it's, it's really evenly matched. Uh, clearly, it's tied, so it's an evenly matched game. And the players are back out on the court. Yep. You see Post now shooting, Holy Family, waiting to see them. About six minutes or so until we get ready back into the second half. Again, this is the second game uh, for the women. And coming up tonight, it's the men. It's Again, we're just coming up uh, just a few hours away. Uh, Caldwell Chestnut Hill yes. tip off five o'clock should be a good one. Looking forward to that. I called five, four Caldwell games this season. I'm yeah. very excited to see what the what the men can do here now that they're back on the big stage. I was going to say I think you know a thing or two about Caldwell, yes. so I'm excited. It'd be great to have your expertise about that. Uh, I don't know about his expertise. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson Bloomfield after that seven o'clock tonight. Uh, again, that is the men coming up later on. It is the women still who will play Dominican tomorrow for the CACC championship. And you mentioned, Mike, the potential that we could have maybe three teams from the CACC in the, in the tournament for the women. You're very exciting. Great for the, all these programs. Great for the conference. Just, just crummy for the NE10 and the ECC. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Somebody's going to get bounced. Right. But we'll, we don't want to put the cart before the horse here. Let's, let's, let's play some more basketball, and, and we'll figure it out at the end of the day. Exactly. So it uh, should be a good... Uh, second half here, Holy Family and Post uh, coming up. Uh, we will be hearing from Andrew Byrne, who is with Coach Bernadette Lekaitis. Uh, Coach Lekaitis is getting set right now, and we're going to go over there to the sidelines. Andrew? Welcoming in, Coach. And, Coach, how big was that 13 nothing run right at the under five to get back in this game and go in tied? What did that change for you in the halftime speech? Absolutely gave us momentum, um, and that's what we needed. You know, our team stayed together through their ups, you know, the ups and downs of the ebbs and flows of the game, you know, and that's what we keep continue to preach all, all year long. We've had a lot of these type of games, so we were ready for it, and I think that was a huge impact for us to go on that type of run ourselves to finish the half. You held Post to just four first quarter points in the first meeting. Have you noticed anything different from them offensively? No, I mean, they're a great team. You know, I think, like, that's why they're here. That's why we're both here. We both have really solid players that can make plays. You know, they're just, they made a lot to start the game, which we knew we were, had to be ready for. So we adjusted defensively and just continue to make those adjustments as we continue the game. Thanks for the time, Coach. Thank you. Back to you guys upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Coach Byrne. Talking to Coach uh, Bernadette Lekaitis for Holy Family. Any surprise there? I mean, again, this is a team, she says, kind of battle-tested. They, they've called their way back before, and then they did it again. To go into that half, great momentum, huge impact, adjust their defense. I think she knows what she's doing. I think so. Both these coaches certainly know what they're doing. And, and I really want to know what Coach Plepka was talking about <laughs> with this advantage here. You have to know. I'm here all the time. I have no idea. You what start to think, you know, Larry Bird in the old Boston Garden yeah, where he right. knew the soft spots on the floor. Yeah, right, exactly. So he could dribble and find the dead spot on the floor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find out. Maybe he knows something. He knows something. He's not going to tell me. So we're going to go back to the broadcast booth, Jerry Milani and then J.R. Denali. Denali. <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> I'm mixing up names here. It's a vowel Denali. at the end. It doesn't Denali. matter. I'm sorry. Wow. Milani, Milano. Wow. See, I oh, gave, my God. See, I gave. Just don't I, call me late for the lunch or for whatever foods in this bread. I gave Andrewson props. I didn't, I didn't <coughs> compliment Mr. Jimenez. And look what he does. I combined, he does. I combined their names. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. I'm very sorry. Oh, you can hear me. Yeah. We're yes. such a team. I can hear you, too. Now, now you can hear me. I We're can such hear a team. You, and it's okay. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right. We whittled down the last three minutes before the <laughs> half here, getting us back on, back on track. Um, and I, I think I'd like to guys. That's what they're going to be down. down. Or a 
we go. Tigers! We're in it to win it! 40 minutes away, come on, ladies! If Holy Family win, they will be the, the could be the home team going in to the uh, championship game. The Dominican see they have two two divisions in the north and the south, and um. Holy time, holy family is in the they're in the uh, south. They're in the south. So holy family. So, the Vatican, number two seed for the South, already beat number, number one seed for the, no, 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 the Vatican, number two seed for the North, already beat Jefferson, the number one seed from the South. So, right now, who's oh, the number one seed from the North, and the whole time is number two seed, two seed for the South. So that means if Holy Family pulls off this win, they could pass the the part probably be the help key for the Wilders game. I don't know how they decide that. Gives them, um, and obviously what what Coach Lakaitis gives them. That's a terrific player. You know, during the glory days, you know, that Mike McLaughlin was the head coach. So she understands what it takes to create a team and have that team execute the plan. Tigers. Eagles will have the first possession here of the second half on the alternate possession. Eubanks tries a three right away. Oh, good. Let's go. Better slings it across. Well, I'm so impressed with Sir Foss's ability. Let's go, Tigers! When she shoots layups and her body control, it really plays well beyond her years as a freshman. Give the hands up, Tigers! Give the hands up! Deep, 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 so Tiara, I think, was in this little decision there. Not sure if she wanted to back that or to drive, and she ended up getting kind of in between. You yeah, can you know, do it! He who hesitates you is can lost, do and she was it. lost on that offensive move. Sometimes it's better to just pull the trigger. Sometimes it doesn't matter which decision you make, you just make the decision. As the ah. floater off back iron, no good from O'Moore, and there were her three fouls. You know, both these teams coming out of the locker room really cold. Let's see which team starts to uh, get going on the offensive end. Defense! So the Defense! Last won't go. Pagano the follow blocked by Treader. And now Haynes, the follow up. Three. Three. No good. Oh, we got to get the ball. The ball. Uh, good Take job by the family to, time, fight right? to get that defensive rebound. With Take it time! Take it time! Try to the lockdown to Prevost. Prevost steps through. Doesn't it's finish. Good. Yes. Rebound and she's fouled. It's going to be three on her. And that's a tough You can't do that! You can't do that! Move by Carolyn Prevost. Just not able to finish it. Pagan just literally kind of just nudging Mo Moore while she had the basketball. Morrow had a good first quarter. Quieter in the second. That's a touch. Let's go, Tigers! And a little bomb by there by 
that you on the field. Yeah, and that's a good call. And then, you know, a point of emphasis this year in college basketball is that arm bar. And you see McQueen, watch, watch her get her arm extended right there. Get that left arm extended and slowing down the dribbler's progression to the basket. You can't do it! You can't do it!
not in complete Well, and that's fair. I mean, his, his starting center just picked up a fourth person with five minutes to go in the third quarter. I mean, that's a big moment here in the game. Let's go. Second one comes up short for the offensive rebound by Morrow. Hey, up to City so far, it looks Trader like. For two. Well, rebound, I don't know. I mean. Don's still in there with the four fouls, coach. Well, I think it's because they couldn't sub her out as a big three. Straight up three by Simmons. And a smart timeout by Coach Plevka to make I'm sure out. he's able to get Pagan off the floor. I'm out. You want to make sure on defense she doesn't have any defense. You are watching Holy Family and Post here in the semifinals of the CACC tournament. Stay right here. Ready to make an impact on the world? At Holy Family University, our renowned faculty will help you realize your dreams. With nearly 40 majors and 625 courses in business, the arts, nursing, and education, the possibilities are endless. And with amazing internships at Fortune 500 companies, we've got you covered. At Holy Family University, we aren't just preparing you for your first job, we're preparing you for life. Learn more at holyfamily.edu slash visit. Holy Family University, the value of family. All right, Jerry Milani here with J.R. Danalo and Mike and Tim on the table. Andrew Byrne down on the floor. And I don't know if we can do better than this, Coach. We had an overtime game in the first game. We got a two-point game with 441 to play. The number one seed, the number two south seed is going to be uh, going down to the wire again. Yeah, I mean, I we're seeing, you know, really evenly matched teams both, you know, Clearly, we had, obviously, we had what a great game in game one, but both these teams taking each other's punch so far here uh, in this second game. Treader. Lob down to Morrow. Morrow spins. Can't get the finish. Simmons the rebound. Now, good job by the Eagles limiting Holy Family just one there shot a lot of their offensive possessions. Thirty-one for post. Down on the post. McQueen. Jumper. Short. Washington down the baseline. Washington defensive player of the week. November. Leads the team with 33 block shots in limited time. They'll take the media timeout now. But we'll that is the time media timeout. Just went on a break. So I think the, the opportunity for Post here, obviously they have to try to fight back now without paying up a god. But for Post is to probably just do what they did in that first, find a way to get back to what was working in that first quarter, which they've really struggled with since then. Well, and I think the, the thing that's changed from like the midway point of the second quarter until now, you know, the ball really moved a lot in that first quarter. A lot of people touched it, you know, and even though they shot the ball well from the perimeter, things were going inside out. Now, you know, you see a lot of settling for perimeter jump shots where Post is not getting a lot of things going to the basket. And Pagan, when she was on the floor, she very rarely touched it in an offensive possession near the basket. So that just, it just speaks to the ball just staying on the perimeter. And you're a little bit easier to guard when the when the ball is out there. And if you don't shoot it well, well, obviously you're not going to score. And I think Holy Family has done a nice job defensively of staying in passing lanes, not allowing dribble penetration, and not allowing that entry pass into the post. I mean, it's been a really well-played defensive game, actually, by both teams. Yeah, again, you're looking at some of the numbers, and Post is a team that held teams under 43 times. They were themselves held under 40 when these two teams played the first time, so not a big surprise that we're here in the 40s uh, with 13, with 14 minutes to play in the game. Angela Hayes, the grad student from Woodbury, New Jersey, is in there now again, number three. 
chance is stole, got stolen back, though, by Treader. Treader again. Has to get the pass down low to Prevost. Yes. Prevost has been tough down there today. Well, and with Pagan off the floor, Prevost is really going to have an opportunity to score at will inside. She has 12, just above her season average. Hayes. Haynes is too strong with that. Eubanks avoids the foul. Quickly the other way comes Hinkle. Jumper. Get to go. Well, and you know, there's the, the other freshman, if you will. And Taylor Hinkle's been a terrific player for this Holy Family team. And you saw right there, kind of an end-to-end -end play, but a good two-foot jump stop, jump shot. And to give Holy Family its largest lead of the day. This might be a big three minutes here. Most keep things close as a three-pointer by Simmons is being to have the lead to 46-43. Great call, Jerry. I mean, that's a huge basket. For the Eagles, Simmons with a big, big three ball to cut the lead in half. Second time the junior has made a three ball here in the third quarter. Three point lead, the Tigers. Here's Momore, foul line jumper. No good, Eubanks can't corral it. Well, and, and there you see again, Taylor Hinkle, a lot of tenacity going to the offensive glass as Kiara Eubanks slow to get up. She's gonna try to walk it off. See if they decide to bring White in for her anyway. And they will, just to have her get a quick look. Hopefully Kiara Eubanks back in there soon. She's a, a fun player to watch, Coach. Well, and with Tanya Pagan off the floor, it's, you know, Kiara Eubanks is another bigger player that now has to go to the bench. And this is, you know, prime time once again. I mean, you didn't see a, a, a post entry there for the basket, but you saw an offensive rebound by Hinkle for an easy putback. You know, these are a big two minutes for the post Eagles. Queen now leads it for White. Over to Simmons. Simmons, step back three again. And <laughs> Winner of the quarter, it's a two point game. And ice water in her veins, stepping back to create space and draining a long range three. Searfoss, straight up three for Hinkle for the answer, no good. Battle for the rebound. White comes out of there on the floor with it and flips it ahead. Corner to McQueen for three, no good. Bounds are going to say it stays with the Eagles. Hayes was letting it go out of bounds, thinking it was off an eagle, but I wonder if she literally like walked it out of bounds. Did she? Did she oh, she touched it right there. And just tried to sell it. Yeah, I, I think she definitely touched it. Simmons. Hayes all over her. Is McQueen. Drive, blocked away by Prevost. 25 block shots on the season for the junior from Belmead, New Jersey. Here's another. Well, and, and great body control by Prevost to not commit the foul. Simmons on the sideline. We've seen this a lot, Coach, with the, the three-point line a little further out the last couple of years. Players want to start that offense a little you know, behind the three-point line so they have that option, but forget where they are exactly on the floor and the heels touching the, the sidelines have been a big issue over the last couple of years. Well, that's a great point. You just you, you lose your perspective out on the court sometimes. Hinkle, off glass, won't go. Washington the rebound. Now that's a good rebound by Roxell Washington. Haynes, step back three, short. Washington, another offensive board this time. Simmons for three, the third three-pointer of the game for Tisha. They it's all here in the third quarter. Wow. Post back ahead. Just a, an explosion 
by Miss Simmons to give the Eagles the lead. Here's Sear Foss to Hayes. Baseline three, the answer by Treader won't go. Treader gets it back. Six seconds in the quarter. Feeds the corner, Hinkle. Two, one, floater won't go. And that's the end of the third quarter. Tijanae Simmons comes in off the bench. No points in the first quarter, no points in the second quarter. 12 here in the third, and the Post Eagles have rallied back, and they lead it 49-48. Let's go down to Andrew with more. Re update on Kiara Eubanks. They were massaging her left calf for the medicine, uh, medical privacy tent, but all indications are that the transfer from Wilmington will return in this game. That would be a big addition for Post. She was out the last couple of minutes, but it allowed others like Simmons to step up for the Eagles, who carry a one-point lead into the fourth quarter. But we expect to see Eubanks back shortly for Post. Back to you, Jerry and Jr. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, Kiara Eubanks, you mentioned it. Coach just uh, needing that other front court presence. Washington, though, has done a nice job. You've got a couple, got an offensive rebound, a defensive rebound. That's all you can ask for her to do. Come in here, get some rebounds, buy some time for when you can get Pagan back in there. And that's so perfectly said, Jerry, that she was able to allow Post to get through those four minutes with Pagan off the floor and you saw Prevost get one look inside and Holy Family went away from it. You know, they needed to keep feeding the post with Pagano off the floor. All that said, TJNA Simmons, wow. And we talked about it. Which team was gonna have their complimentary players step up? You know, here we are going into the fourth, one point game, great game. Eight three pointers for the Eagles to two for the Tigers. Both of those by Lindsay Treader. She has it now. Here's Treader. Looking inside. Mo Moore. Baseline. A little floater won't go. Washington, another rebound in traffic. Rox Kell with those nice extended arms right there to grab that rebound. Both hands. And, and she's really giving great minutes to Coach Plefka with Pagan on the bench. You wonder when he's going to make the decision to go back to her. Right now he doesn't have to. Haynes, Scoots, won't go. Hinkle rebounds. Treader. Hinkle, thought about the three. Feeds it back, stolen away by Simmons. Two on one, Simmons. They reset. Haynes saying, okay, come back out, get it. Let's reset things. Here's McQueen. Roselle Catholic product. Here she goes. Leaves it out for White. Lines up a three. Too long. Nice rebound by Moore. Back the other way. Searfoss. And going out of bounds with it is McQueen, but she'll take that. To oh. stop the progress. McQueen with it. Look at how she's hustling back and she's able to get ahead of Searfoss and literally just take it right out of her hands. But the play is made by her, her energy and her hustle to run ahead of Skylar Cephas. A minute and a half gone by here in the fourth quarter. Post holding a one point lead. But a floater in the lane won't go on the hook. And a heady play by Roxkell Washington. She wasn't going to get the rebound, but she tipped it away from Prevost, right into the hands of White. Here's Haynes. Haynes has not scored in the second half. Now she tries a long three. Comes up short. Treader the board. Treader around to Searfoss. Skyler drives. Little hold foul on the outside by Eubanks. So good to see. See Kiara back in there. Well, Searfoss is able to set that screen up nicely. And White and Eubanks just, or actually it, it was on White. Eubanks is just coming into the game now. 
that's a big return to the action for the Eagles. Morrow. Nice drop stack and a foul. It's going to put Prevost at the line. And, and even though Washington has given really good minutes, Holy Family has to try to get the ball inside to Carolyn Prevost with Pagan off the floor. It's, it's arguably their best option to be able to score, and she's a really good free throw shooter as well, so feed that post. 13 points now for the Bellmead, New Jersey native. It's in Somerset County, just south of Hillsborough. Nice one-handed rebound by Haynes. Back comes Shreya. Haynes. Simmons to Haynes. Thought about that long three, but one more was in her face. Ten seconds. Haynes spins off the last and in. That's the move Sheree Haynes has been trying to get to go all game. And you see what a good offensive player she is. The patience and the ability to back her girl down to score. And looking for the feed down low, and a held ball is going to go back to post. Uh, a good hustle play there by White. Well, good help defense. Good help defense by the Eagles, as you see Simmons going to track right to Prevost. And she got away with, if you look at her, her feet right there, she's touching the basketball with her feet on the end line. It actually should have stayed possession to Holy Family. Credit Simmons there, rather than White on that for me. Here is Haynes, now gets it to Simmons. Simmons. A little hand check there by Moore. It's going to be her third. She and Moore had those three fouls she got early in the second period. And well, now gets her fourth. Sorry, Jerry. I mean, she just, again, she just extends her arm. She didn't make a lot of contact, but that arm being extended, that's going to get called all the time. Uh -huh. Not allow teams to use their arms to impede the progress of the ball carrier, ball handler. Here's Haynes. Haynes one-on-one, -on -one, and now a little touch foul there on Hayes. Angela Hayes, the grad student. From a similar situation there. You can put that first hand out, but when you get that second hand out, they're going to get you on that. Well, and, and again, it's, it's a point of emphasis, so calls are going to get made like that. Haynes, Scoots won't go. Caught the ball in traffic. Got it off just in time before the travel. Here's Searfoss. Corner to Treader. Treader gets it back. Searfoss. Off glance, won't go, but a foul. It's a good take by Skyler. And she was able to just get enough of a lean in, right? Watch her lean right in and get Haynes to, to draw a little bit of contact to get that foul call. Such a, I'm sorry, such a smart player for a freshman. It's a, one thing we always talk about around tournament time is it's a freshman, but she's played 29 games. So it's a freshman who now has that experience and, and and, and Holy Family played tight games all year long. They had a couple of games where they, you know, kind of opened up big leads, but they played these kinds of games, and so did Post, played these kinds of games, and Post playing a game just last week that they really needed to win, and they won it, and that's kind of shown today, too. And we're tied at 51 with six minutes and eight seconds to play in. Let's use the word regulation, Coach. With regulation. <laughs> Here's White, <laughs> across to Simmons. Simmons. Eubanks, oh, spin, off glass, will go. Beautiful spin, gets it back, beats White. Straight up three for Simmons, no good. White the offensive rebound, loses it to Hayes. She's down. Five on four, getting back though. Treader for three, yeah, oh, hit it out. I was calling it down, coach. Trades the rebound. Crazy end-to-end -end action. Bodies flying everywhere. Payne settles things just a little bit for us now. 
Waits for a screen, gets it. Haynes, Simmons, straight up three. Back rim no good, and she fouls coming in. And Sear Foss had already collected that ball. Well, Simmons in her favorite spot right at the top of the key had two really good looks in successive possessions. Just couldn't get uh, either one to fall. As you see, Haynes finding her wide open it was just a little deep. This was a good foul, though. Otherwise, Searfoss would have made a head, head of the floor pass probably for an easy layup for Holy Family. Simmons now with 63 pointers on the season, fourth in the conference coming into today's action. It's been all that and then some today. Prevost off glass with the left hand. Well, uh, Shariah Haynes was looking to draw the charge, and I'll tell you what, she almost did. Did a good job of absorbing the contact, but a nice finish by Carolyn Prevost. Eubanks leaves it for McQueen. McQueen, step back two. Yes. Nice move by Tiara McQueen to create some space. Good step back for the jump shot. Seven points for Rahway, New Jersey native. Here's Morrow. Prevost again, right hand this time. With a little spin move to get it to go. This time cutting into the basket. And a, and a solid move, but the patience that she shows. Locating the defender upon the catch, and then a quality finish. She only had two points the first time these teams played. 17 today. Scramble on the floor and a held ball is going back to the Tigers. Timeout on the floor. Holy Family 55, post 53. And we went down to the wire in the first game. I think clearly we're going down to the wire here in the second game, no matter what happens in the next 349. Just a, a, a well played defensive battle between both teams. But I like what you said before, Coach, about. Yeah, you've got Searfoss, and, it's, and you got Haynes, and that's the, the battle of the two all-conference players, but it's been the supplementary players. It's been the, the Prevost, it's been the uh, Simmons, it's been the uh, Eubanks, other players who have made the difference and made this game uh, what it is. And I think that, you know, the coaches do a good... Tomorrow afternoon, Angelina DeMarsico. What a big shot. Big shot, baby. From before January 1st. And talk about Sherea Haynes, who was just mentioned. She's first team all conference. Imagine missing. Angelina DeMarsico. She's, uh,. She's mugging it up pretty good right now, and she should feel great about herself. What a big shot. Overtime to send her team to tomorrow's championship. Love how she talked about how it's a family, and she just joined this team this past year, and already has been such an important part of what's been a, uh, well, Bill Diener always has that family. His, co his teams are always like that. What high school did she go to? I don't remember. Oh, okay. Here's Hayes, jumper from the baseline won't go, but she'll get to the free throw line with the foul. Chance for first points for Angela Hayes. And a good pass by Ava Morrow, ball going inside, little inside out, as Hayes was able to attack the right baseline and get to the free throw line to try to extend this lead for Holy Family. One more coming. She's only attempted now 11 free throws on the season, has the grad student. Special education major out of Woodbury, New Jersey. She was injured last year, played three games, got injured, and so was granted this really sixth year, fifth year, including the COVID year. And it's kind of that injury derailing her career a little bit where she was kind of more on a, on a higher trajectory, but trying to do some things here to help her team. 
get to the finals. Pagan will get to the free throw line. Couldn't quite get the yeah. layup to fall, but she will get the order for the pair of free throws. And give Sharia Haynes a lot of credit. You know, she's been trying to use that move where she... Cheesecake. I told her already. I already told her. Has it's gone down? Terrific game for the sophomore. Haynes crossover. Haynes spins, flips it up. Crab wanted to travel. Looked like it was okay. Scramble for it, and it's going to be a held ball. Dangerous play there by Pagan. Just scrapping and hustling. One thing though, because Washington played so well in those seven, eight minutes, Pagan can really just play. And if she gets the fifth foul, you don't want to, but she knows that Washington can back her up and, and, and provide some, some defense. And there's no tomorrow. There's only 243 left. You can't play cautiously now. You've got to try to sell out and, and play as hard as you can. And if you pick up the fifth, so be it. Eubanks, double screen for Haynes. Kiara, Tiara, the queen for three won't go. Tipped around, and now a foul can go the other way. And that's a, that's a big foul, because that'll put Holy Family to the free throw line. They are now in the bonus. You see Tiara McQueen coming in from the back. And she was able to displace Ava Morrow, who was in possession of the ball. And Morrow will go to the line to try to extend this lead for Holy Family. Time is starting to become an ally for Holy Family and an adversary for the Eagles. Another missed free throw, though. That's three consecutive missed free throws for Holy Family. Yeah, pretty good free throw shooting teams on both ends here, but that one way off. Wow. Holy Family really could have extended their lead. Here's Eubanks. Eubanks drives, look for an opening. Blocked away, but a foul on Morrow. It's gonna be the third on Ava. And that's a good take by Kiara Eubanks again. Showed a lot of patience, setting up her drive, and absorbs that contact. And Morrow did get her with the body as she was going up for the layup. Eubanks, a 70% free throw shooter, three of four on the day, makes that one back to a two point game. Jerry, I mean, this is something for us to, to look back on potentially, those missed free throws by Holy Family. You know, they really could have solidified their lead, and now they only see their lead at one with 2.11 remaining. We start counting possessions here too, if it does get to any spread. But right now, we saw at the end of the Dominican Jefferson game that the lead can change quickly. Here's Moore. Moore wanted to fight that lob down there. What a defensive play by Haynes taking on Prevost. Haynes really, as you just said, took on the post player and won that battle. Great play by Sharia Haynes. 100 seconds to play. Haynes feeds Simmons. Eubanks drives. Lost the footing. Gets it back. Coach Plefka wanted a timeout when she went down. Let's see if they got it. What? Discussion by the coach. Now he's got to hear the, the timeout has to be called. The official has to call it. Hear it and call it before the possession changes, before the, the player releases the ball. And they're not going to allow this timeout. Wow. You only call it when you have possession. And if it wasn't heard in time, they're not going to be able to award the timeout. And that 
looks like the call right here. Does that sound right to you, Coach? Yeah, and I, I think the, the, the whistle is kind of like inadvertent, but I think Coach Plufka was really trying to, to get that timeout called, and it wasn't granted. And there was only a half second there where she had the ball and hadn't tossed it yet, so we would have had to come right in that second. Treader now leaves it for Morrow. Morrow's jumper, back iron. Eubanks the rebound somehow stayed, and now she knocks it off right down for the travel. So Eubanks got injured on the rebound and ran it to Haynes, who now is... struggling to get up. Wow. What a turn of events. Yeah, crazy. I mean, you see... A near, a near travel there, but her, her hand going down is okay. And then Hayes here goes down, and that's the travel. As yeah. the crowd lets you know. Yeah, both of them. What a shame. You know, kind of a comedy of errors there. But, you know, two... Two whistles that really went against post. You know, some contact where no foul gets called, the timeout not granted, and Holy Family clinging to a one-point lead. So, you know, Coach Plefka played at Texas Tech. Four. For Bobby Knight. Bobby Knight. How might Bobby Knight have reacted to not getting the timeout call that he requested. Well, hopefully there wouldn't have been a chair anywhere nearby. I mean, they... at least the chairs with the CACC would have gotten the CACC. Some of the chairs there would have gotten the CACC. A little publicity. Yeah, yeah that's true. Could have, could have. They could get a double bye. They could get a double bye. They could get a double bye. The Atlantic 10 tournament. How about that? You ever think you'd ever hear Fordham getting a double bye? Wow. Other than, other than bye 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 bye. bye, bye. Yeah. 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 Sear Foss, under a minute to play. Mo Moore. Mo Moore. Drives, lays it off glass, no good. Rebound, pulled out of there by Prevo. She skips it ahead. A fresh 20. Sear Foss. Sear Foss drives, spins, doesn't get the roll. Eubanks the rebound. Shot clock is off. Post trail by a point. Timeout. Wow. Lefka wanted the timeout, apparently. He really wanted the timeout. He, he's just frantically you know, calling that timeout, which finally gets called. See, if he calls the timeout when they first get possession, he can advance the ball, but instead they move the ball over a half court, which really doesn't matter with the shot clock off, because again, with 24 seconds left, Post is going to run their offense at a designated time left. So whether there's 26 or 24, they'll run it at 8 or run it at 6. It won't matter that way. But uh, you, you got the risk of the turnover before you get to the ball over to half court. The old days, you used to have to get it over half court, then call the timeout, worry about the person reaching in to knock it away, and now they've kind of eliminated all of that. And it gives uh, Post a chance now with a one-point deficit to run whatever play they want, whatever they feel is their best opportunity to get any kind of basket. It could be a three-point basket, which is their forte, or it could be getting the ball into Pagan, or it could be Haynes taking the ball to the basket. Lots of options. Yeah, and I, I think that the ball will clearly be in Sharia Haynes' hands to start the possession and create the opportunities. You're right. She may not necessarily be the one to finally shoot the shot, but nonetheless, the ball will be in her hands to try to get it inside. And maybe it's gonna go inside to Tanya Pagan. Maybe it's gonna be, you know, a dribble drive kick out to Eubanks or McQueen for a three ball. Eubanks to inbound, gets it to Haynes. Here's Haynes. Sheree Haynes with 19. Haynes. Haynes, down the nine, gets a screen, Haynes, the floater won't go, offensive rebound, Eubanks, score the basket and a foul! Kiara Eubanks has a chance for a three-point play! Wow, what a, what an offensive rebound by Kiara Eubanks. And you know, just like in the first game, you know, so much dribble, so much dribble by Sharia Haynes.
It's great defense by Holy Family. You see Prevost force a tough shot, but Eubanks on the weak side barely had it in her hands, is able to get the putback to give the lead to the Eagles. Two-point lead for the Eagles. Timeout. The Tigers will move it to the front court. They'll have a possession trailing by two. Wow. And now, you know, 3.9 seconds, loads of time, loads of time. And you don't need a three-point basket. You just need the two to tie it. One of the things that in the um, in the first game, and I and I didn't mention it, but I but I thought it, and I, I'm kicking myself that I didn't mention late in the game and that that last possession that Jefferson had, Haley Meinl inbounded the basketball, and I didn't like it because the best, arguably the best player, inbounded the basketball, then not allowing herself an opportunity to get it back. Let's see who inbounds the ball for Holy Family. Put it in somebody's hands who might not need to shoot the basketball. You don't have that much time. Meinl in that moment shouldn't have been the one inbounding the basketball for Jefferson. Let's see who the Tigers come out with here. They had Morrow, Treader, Prevost, Searfoss, and Moore on the floor. It's been what we've seen most of the game, so a little bit of Reapy in the first half, a little bit of Corliss <laughs> and some Hinkle, but that's really been the lineup we've seen almost the entirety of the second half. Uh, they've laid it all out there, and this post-Eagles team has laid it all out there, too. Just love watching these two teams go at it here. So evenly matched, so fun to watch, and it's coming down to the wire. 3.9 to go. And here you go. Skylar Cephas is inbounding the basketball. I don't like it. I, I don't like it, and, and Coach Plumka is going to call his last time out, and I don't like that move either. Here's why. Holy Family scores. You could call a timeout and advance the ball. He wanted to see it for a second time. I don't like Cephas being the one to inbound the basketball, and I didn't like the timeout there from Coach Plefka because if Holy Family scores, you now can't advance the basketball. Right. And of course, he wanted to see what formation they would come in, who's inbounding the ball, because now you're going to go to the same thing you were going to go with, and now look who's inbounding the ball. And a, and a great move by Bernadette Lockheed, Lockheedis, to, to put Jessica Reapy in inbounding the basketball. Here it goes to Morrow, still knocked away. It stays with the Tigers. Now 2.8 from the Oppo side. He doesn't have any timeouts left, I don't believe. Now neither team, both Treader teams are out. Inbound. Treader flips it. Knocked away, stolen by Simmons. And the timeout, the foul. Uh, and, a, and a tough inbounds pass. Both inbounds passes guarded so well, and you see T.J. A. Simmons stepping in front of Ava Morrow to intercept it. They're not going to put any more time back on the clock. This game is basically over. Yeah, without that timeout, well, it's Holy Family also does not have a timeout. Although that, so they can't advance they the basketball. Advance the basketball, in, in, at least as it looks for us with the timeout situation. Makes the second.